Thanks everybody for coming today. My name is Josh Burdick. I am an account manager here at Marquee 360. And this is our Productivity Thursday. Today we'll be discussing collaboration with Azure DevOps. Well, we do offer these webinars the last Thursday of every month. Uh, we cover a different topic each month. So as you can see, moving forward, uh, we'll be discussing automate Microsoft Teams creations and approvals, integrations with Power Automate, and extending project for the web with Power Apps. We do have a new series, which is our Solutions 101 series. This is more of an introductory to these applications, uh, but it can also be used for people that are currently using these, uh, but may not know all the features and functionalities available to them. And again, these are also held once a month. These are 30 minute sessions. Uh, and moving forward on these will be Power Automate, Power BI, and Project for the Web. And if there's anything up here that you guys would like to see that you don't, uh, please feel free to let us know. We're, uh, we're happy to, to take suggestions. And for those that don't know us, I just wanted to give a quick introduction to Marquee 360. We are a Microsoft Gold partner. Uh, we focus on cloud productivity, project and portfolio management and collaboration. We have locations here in the United States, Canada, as well as Europe. And we have over 20 years of experience working with and for Microsoft. And we focus on digital transformation using the Microsoft 365 platform. And since the beginning, our core focus has always been on customer success, uh, being a trusted advisor, and extending that Microsoft solution to enable a better user experience for you, the end user. In the, the platform, we focus on project, whether it be project online or project for the web, teams with planner integration. Uh, we do Power BI reporting and dashboards, Power Automate workflows, and last but not least, Power Apps. So again, thank you guys for coming. Sorry for that little hiccup there. Um, I wanted to hand this over to Neil so that we could start the demo for you all. All right, hello everybody. My name is Neil Lockhart. I'm going to do the demonstration today. So the topic we're covering today is um, connecting Azure DevOps with Project Online. Um, really, you know the probably the key reason organizations are going to do a integration such as this is you want to leverage project online for you know your more traditional project management type functionality so you can have your regular project schedules you can do resource management time sheets um, portfolio reporting you can also do collaboration either through Microsoft teams or through SharePoint um, and then you can also do some more advanced capabilities like um, portfolio analysis, you know, project prioritization, things like that. Um, but the one area that Project Online is not entirely strong on is the Agile Scrum methodologies. Um, in the Project Client, you do have some Agile Scrum capabilities, um, but with Project Online in and of itself, <clears throat> sort of short of doing some different reporting and you know modifications of how you look at it it doesn't really have your you know kind of traditional agile scrum methodology um, now if you need a light variation of agile and scrum one one option we also have is with our teams integration with planner planner will give you a kanban board capability of managing those uh, those tasks that you're assigning to your resources and and you can do a more you know light agile type methodology. But if you need something that's a little bit more robust, then at least on the Microsoft platform, then Azure DevOps would be the preferred tool. Um, so what we're going to look at today is, well, how would I integrate the two together so I kind of get the best of both worlds? So you'd use Project Online for your core enterprise PMO capabilities um, and get all the um, visibility and the analytics and reporting capabilities out of Project Online, but allow your development teams to work inside of Azure DevOps. So the actual work will happen there, the tracking of their items will happen there, but then we want to pull that information back into Project Online so that they could do timesheets. The project manager would have some control over scheduling those activities. Um, and then, of course, it'll roll up into your portfolio dashboards, your reporting. OK, so that's what we're going to cover today. So let me share my screen. All right, so hopefully everybody can see my screen here. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can integrate. First thing we're going to do is do a project intake process um, because we are going to be using multiple tools here. So with the intake process, we can actually automate the setup of say an Epic over in Azure DevOps that will be linked to a project within Project Online. So if I click on new request here, oops, wrong screen. There we go. I'm going to create a request. Specify who the project sponsor is going to be. Basically, this will track who the approval is going to go to for this request. And then here I have request type. So in this case, we can specify what type of project is it going to be or, or what platform do we want to use? Um, so, for example, I have a you know, marketing campaign. Maybe that'll just go to Teams and Planner. IT project, maybe that's more of a traditional project online project. Same with a facilities project. But if I want to do an agile project, I could do agile DevOps project. Um, now, the other fields on this form, I'm going to go ahead and fill some of these out real quick. Because you know, as part of the integration, we could also push some of this information over in Azure DevOps so that the project will have a you know description and whatnot based on what the requester submitted. So I'm gonna put in the go live date. We could put in budget information. Um, we could also do scoring here. Um, so this this is a good kind of light way for you to um, just put kind of a gatekeeper, you know, check on these requests as they're coming in. So you could have different questions or business drivers, and then based on what they're selecting, it's going to start calculating what the priority score. So this intake app is an example of using Power Apps to do this. Um, so this is a Power App, and you can see what the overall score is. And if we have any attachments, we could attach those files. If you have a spec or a requirements document, anything like that. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and submit it. And then here I can see all the different requests that I have going through the pipeline. Um, in this demo environment, I'm just saving it to a SharePoint list, but you could also save it to a database or some other location if you want to, even inside of Teams. So if I go to Outlook, we should see a request pop in here any second. There it is. So when our request comes into here, you can see there's our request that we just submitted. In the email, we can put some of the content from that particular request, so that way the approver doesn't necessarily have to go back and open up the request. Um, but if they wanted to, there is a link back to that particular form. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and approve it. And then with Power Automate, we're going to go and set up those projects. Um, in Azure DevOps, we're going to create an epic for that particular project, and then we're going to link it to a project online project with the same name. All right, so let me jump into Azure DevOps real quick. And if I refresh here, we should see there's our epic that got created. Okay. And also you can see some of that content that I had submitted gets pushed into Azure DevOps as well. And then from the project online perspective, if we go into the project center, there you can see our project that shows up here in project online as well. And if I were to open this up, 
and it looks like it's still saving it. Let me just refresh here. There we go. So when I go into here, you can still leverage some of the core capabilities of Project Online. Um, so for example, you can have different project detail pages where you would put in different values for um, maybe for your portfolio or you know your project reporting. Um, you could still use, for example, strategic impact, which is how we would prioritize the projects within Project Online. Um, and then for the schedule, there's different ways to set this up. The way my demo environment set up is we're going to use Azure DevOps as kind of the source of truth for all the activities that are happening. Um, and in my my environment, the way it's currently set up is I'm basically going to synchronize features and stories on this epic back to Project Online. Um, but you could pick other work item types in Azure DevOps as well. But that's what I'm syncing currently. Um, and if I go here, I want to build the team and take advantage of Project Online's resource management capabilities, I could go in and select the people that are going to work on my project. I'm going to go ahead and add them. And I'm doing this for a couple different reasons. One is in DevOps, we're going to assign those items to that particular those particular resources. But I also want to take advantage of the time sheeting capability in Project Online. Um, so as we start synchronizing this project with DevOps, those items will start showing up on the Project Online timesheets. All right. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go over into Azure DevOps. I'm just going to create some sample items. So we're going to go into here and we're going to create a new work item and we're going to create a feature. And we'll say this will be the uh, you know, customer portal. When I get into the details here, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but you'll notice things like um, like we added a schedule tab here. So if we wanted to synchronize the dates back from Project Online back to here so that the resource would get some scheduling information um, right in Azure DevOps, you could do that. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that. For example, if they are looking at their timesheet, the timesheet would have that same schedule data. But again, we can push data back and forth in either direction. Um, in this case, I'm going to go here. You can see there's our project team. So I'm going to go ahead and assign this to myself. And I'm just going to save and close it. So now if we refresh that, you can see that we have our epic and then we have a, a feature right underneath that. And now I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to create some user stories. So we're going to say uh, as a user. As a user, I want to reserve facilities. Again, by default, whoever's the assigned person to the overall feature will will default to that assignment, but you could also switch it to another user if you want. So I'm just going to save and close there. And then we're going to go ahead and create another one. And I'll, assign, I'll leave that one assigned to me. And let me just create one more. And for this one, we'll assign that to Topeka. Okay. So again, here, so if I refresh this view, you'll see there's our epic, there's our feature, and then there's the user stories related to that. We can see what the current status is. We could see who it's currently assigned to. Um, so again, all the work, you know, that the development team would be tracking can happen right here. 
Now you might have a scenario where you would want to actually create these user stories and you know features over here. That's fine too. You know this type of integration would support that as well. Um, but we've what we've tend to find with a lot of our customers is really a lot of that work's going to happen here. Um, and then we just want to pull it over into Project Online so that we get the portfolio visibility on it, and then we can take advantage of the other capabilities in Project Online. All right, so let's go back to Project Online. How do I pull this information back into here? Um, so we're leveraging the Power Platform to do this. Um, so we have some different Power Automate flows that'll get triggered. And what we did is we added a button up here on the ribbon to sync to Azure DevOps. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run this. You can see it just scheduled a queue job, and it's going to take a minute or two, but we should see that information pull here into Project Online. So let's see if it's done. So it's going to refresh. Looks like it's still running. So there you can see our updates have brought in. So you can see what the current state is over in Azure DevOps. You can see what type of a work item is it. The task name is either that feature or that user story name. We can see who it's currently assigned to. All right, so let me refresh this again. So there's a couple of things that we can do at this point. So one is, if I want, I could adjust the schedule. So maybe we have certain sprints that are happening. Um, we just want to adjust to that time frame, or maybe you just want to schedule these in a more traditional fashion, um, like a waterfall type of project. So if I go into here and edit this, I could go into here and you know say this is going to take you know five days overall, but it's you know two, two, and one. And I can go ahead and link these up, you know, do whatever I want to do from a scheduling basis. Uh, you'll see the dates are automatically being scheduled here. So I'll just go ahead and publish these changes. Now, depending on how you want the, the synchronization to happen, like I mentioned, we could push this schedule information back into Azure DevOps. Um, but what I want to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and check this back in and let's go take a look at timesheets. So if I go to my timesheet here, now, I don't quite remember what task I was assigned to, but yep. So there you can see there's our project from DevOps. You can see the customer portal feature, um, and you can see based on that schedule, you know, what it's currently planned to be. And if I were to go to the next time period, well, we should see those other items as well. So you can see there's the other item that's been assigned to me. So as a resource, I could go in and start recording my time, however you would want to do that right here in Project Online. Um, and then I could submit that and update the project. Now, if you don't want to necessarily do the timesheets and you want to get updates brought in, um, you could use DevOps to do that, and then we can synchronize those updates. So for example, if I go back to here, and let's say I go to, um, you know, Kanban board view. Um, hey, Neil. Hey, Neil. Yeah. We had a question. Had a question. Is, is this is a both this ways a both thing, thing, thing or only from, from Azure, Azure DevOps to Project Online? It can be both ways. Currently, for the demo environment I'm in, I'm only doing it one way. I'm pushing from DevOps over into Project Online, but it can go both ways. And I'll 
see my epic yet. We'll do it the old fashioned way. It's not showing up yet, but let's go over to queries here. We'll go back to these. So if I go into here, for example, let's say Topeka works on this particular item and she updates the status. So when it's new, we'll basically treat it as something that's at 0% complete. Um, if it's active, um, it'll go to 50% complete, meaning that somebody's currently working on it. And if it's resolved or closed, it'll it'll go to 100% complete. All right, so I'm going to mark some of these as active. I'm going to go ahead and save it, and I'll mark this other one as closed. Neil, yeah, we had another yeah, we had question. question. Yep. Uh, are you pushing this with a flow or something else? It's all through Power Automate. Yeah, so there's no custom coding or anything here. We're we're using the Power Platform to do everything. All right. All right. So I just made some updates. So if I go back to Project Online, and we go back to my project, you can see here it's 0% complete. No updates have taken place yet. But again, I'm going to go ahead and Tell it I want to get the latest updates. Now I'm clicking on this button. You could also have it set up just as a scheduled job, right? So maybe it runs every night and just pulls updates in or synchronizes between Project Online and DevOps. Um, right now I'm actually triggering it by clicking on that button. The whole idea with that is more of the scenario where as a project manager, I want to get the latest status. Maybe I have to create my status report or I have to go into a meeting. I want the updates right now. I can just click on it. If not, the updates will come in overnight. So let's see if the updates applied. Yep. So here you can see it's gone ahead and it's updated the status here. So overall, now we know our project's 25%. So for at the data level, you know, that's basically what we're doing, right? We're, we're synchronizing certain work items from DevOps over to the project schedule. We're handling the resource assignments in the project schedule so that we can leverage timesheets and some of the resource reporting. Um, and essentially, what that means is from a portfolio level, you know, we, we really benefit from all the project online portfolio capabilities because now you can see those more traditional waterfall projects side by side with the agile projects where all the work's happening over in DevOps. So that'll happen in a couple of different ways. One is if I go here under the project center, you know, you'll see those agile projects right alongside any other your more traditional project types. And you'll see things like, you know, your percent complete and you can take advantage of, you know, KPIs and things like that. Um, the other thing is if I go into the resource management side of it, and if I were to go in and look at a particular resource and look at their resource assignments, now I can see across all their projects that they're working on, um, whether they're traditional type project or they an Azure DevOps project. So down here you can see there's our Productivity Thursday project. Same thing if I look at capacity planning. You know, that information will show up here. So for example, there's that project. So you'll get all the benefits of the um, of the portfolio capabilities within Project Online. And then, of course, you know, we already looked at the timesheets, right? You'll get the timesheets. And if I take this up a notch and go into Power BI, now this may or may not have refreshed yet. It's, uh, it's supposed to refresh in a few minutes. Um, I can actually force it real quick. Oops, not that. Neil, we had another question. Yeah. It was how or where 
did you map fields from DevOps items to the project fields? It's in the flow itself. So we can, um, when we set this up, we either set it up directly in the flow, what those map fields are going to be, or we can have a power app so that, you know, if you have an admin who's not familiar with the uh, flow, they can go ahead and do the mapping there. And another question was, can you use the space time tracker add on in Azure DevOps to enter your time similar to timesheets in project? Um, I'm not familiar with that, but I don't see why not. Yeah, because there's still going to be the work items over there. So here I'm looking in Power BI and there you can see there's our project. The Azure DevOps project showing up here. It hasn't refreshed the uh, percent complete yet, but you can see it showing up in all your reporting here. And if I go down to resource availability, let's see. If I clear this, we'll just look at analyst. And since Topeka is working on our project, oh, that's right. The uh, it's refreshing currently. Let me see if I can get it to show up. Yeah, it's it refreshes every half hour, so it's top of the it's at the bottom of the hour now. So it's currently refreshing this, but you'll see her project show up here in in your resource reports as well. All right. What other questions do we have? Neil, I had two questions come in. Uh, first is, do you offer something similar for JIRA integration? We do, yeah. Yeah, so we we have some you know very similar offering around JIRA. So if you don't use Azure DevOps, you're, you're a JIRA shop, we can do something similar with that. And I think we're gonna schedule a separate webinar for JIRA. Great. And the next question was, is this solution available as a prepackaged solution or what is your model to deploy this? So we do offer it as, you know, its own prepackaged solution. It does require some consulting time just because, you know, your DevOps may be set up differently. Um, your project online environment might be set up differently. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, the earlier question about how do we map the fields? Um, to make it easier for you to administer, there would be a power app where you would do those field mappings there. And then the flow basically looks at that configuration. Any other questions? So currently, uh, this one is uh, not working from project online to Azure, correct? I'm sorry, what was that? It needs a... So Sync is not working from project online to Azure currently? Correct, yeah. In my demo environment here, I don't have the Sync going back, but it, it can do that. I just don't have it set up that way. I mean, that might be useful if you're going to... One of two things, you know, either you want to push the schedule information back, the dates back to DevOps, or if you want to create your user stories and features here, you could set them up here and push it back to DevOps so that the team can then work on them. And Neil, we just had another question. Sorry, Josh, I was going to ask Neil one more question. Um, Neil, all these added um, requests can be handled like through outside of the pre-configured solution, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, think of this as a starter, and then based on your exact requirements, you know, we tweak it and modify it. And the other question I had come in was, can the Power Automate access Azure DevOps in an on-premise server or requires the AD services in cloud? That's a really good question. So, obviously, it's a lot easier using DevOps up in the cloud. 
Um, for on-prem, there is the Power Platform does have a data gateway that we can use to access on-prem data sources. Um, it would require a different approach on some of that because um, the data gateway doesn't support the DevOps APIs directly, um, but we would be able to access the database and we would basically look for events that are happening in that database. Any other questions? So uh, these three tasks are child to uh, customer portal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, these are these are three user stories. They show up as task here, and then over in DevOps, they're linked to that feature, the customer portal feature. And we just had another question come in. Have you experienced syncing the ADO with the project triggering a workflow? Um, yeah, I don't understand exactly what that's getting at, but basically all these can be triggered off of, um, any, anything can be triggered off of these events, right? So when we synchronize from ADO to project online. At the end of that synchronization for the project online changes to be committed, the project needs to be checked in and published, right? And the flow's doing that automatically. Um, but that'll create an event, right? So when, if you had other flows or other automations based on that, they would pick up that publish event and then you could have it do additional things. Um, so it just depends exactly what you're trying to accomplish there. The answer is yes, um, but how you want to really architect that, it just depends. Any other questions? Looks like we may have one more question coming in. Nope. It's a nice intro and a thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. I think we have answered everyone's questions. All right. Well, I'll stop sharing. I don't know if you have another slide deck. Yep, there you go. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, I hope you guys were able to walk away with some new information. Uh, you can find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. And Aaron will be sending out a, um, a survey for you all. If, please take some time to fill that out so that we know how we're doing and how we can adjust going forward. And thanks and enjoy the rest of your week.